hello welcome back to my channel i wanted to make a little update video and just talk about my first week as a nurse injector if you're new here um i've previously been working in the aesthetic industry but i wasn't injecting as a nurse i was just doing like microneedling laser hair removal facials age jet just a bunch of other aesthetic treatments but i wasn't injecting but beginning last week, last week? I don't know. It's been like two weeks, but I'm going to title this video like what I learned in my first week as a nurse injector, but it doesn't really matter. I'm new to injecting and I'm just going to make a little update video about what I've learned um, since I started and just like a little chit chat video. So where to begin? Um, as I said, I have been previously working in the aesthetic field. I just wasn't injecting. So I did have sort of a knowledge of anatomy and the skill of injecting. I just hadn't physically done it. Um, but if I can give one tip to anyone who wants to become a nurse injector, if you're interested in it at all, no matter if you're going to do it tomorrow or a year from now is to start reviewing your anatomy. Obviously, as a nurse, you take anatomy in college, but for me, that was years ago um, because what I did like three and a half, four years of nursing school, um, plus I was a nurse for like two years before even starting now, so it's been like at least six years since I've taken anatomy, so if you're interested in injecting, definitely start like reviewing your head and neck anatomy, muscles, vessels, nerves. Review it all because um, even the other day I was kind of going over my TMJ course um, for oral facial pain and I couldn't even remember all of the cranial nerves. Um, like, I know them, but I couldn't, like, recite them to you anymore or go through and do a full cranial nerve exam. That's just not something that I did in my practice um, when I was a bedside nurse. So, definitely reviewing anatomy is huge. But um, as far as my first week, what I have injected... Um, I have done Botox, like name brand Botox, as well as Xeomin. They're both neurotoxins. I'm sorry for like the traffic in the background. I don't know why I always end up filming in my car, but um, Xeomin, Botox, and Dysport are all neurotoxins, and they're all very similar. Dysport is dosed a little bit differently um, and reconstituted a little bit differently. I, where I work, we personally don't use Dysport, only Xeomin and Botox, not for any particular reason. Um, I believe Galderma makes Botox, the company, um, and we just don't have a big account with them. Um, we mostly purchase our products from Allergan and um, MERS, so we just use Xeomin and Botox, but the difference between Xeomin and Botox, Botox just has a accessory protein, which some people can become resistant to over time if you're getting frequent treatments, like every three months. Sometimes it's pretty rare, but sometimes people can become a little resistant to Botox, and Xeomin is the naked um neurotoxin it doesn't have that accessory protein so um if people become a little immune to botox we can switch it up and do xeomin uh and xeomin also is also a little bit cheaper so i've done a ton of botox and xeomin treatments just like level one stuff so like frontalis so these lines which i need my dogs done so bad um globella or the glabellar complex, which is your procerus and two corrugators, um, and then the orbicularis oculi muscles for crow's feet, so any smile. Again, I need mine done. It's been a while. Um, what else have I injected? Um, masseters for TMJ. Um, that's when you, like, clench down and 
this muscle right here um some people this muscle can cause a lot of pain um especially if you grind your teeth as well as your temporalis muscles right here which is like a big fan muscle like right here um a lot of people who experience my not everyone um but some people experience migraines due to clenching and treating these muscles together can really help um I've also done radial lip lines, so the abicularis oris, as well as one lip flip. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about lip flips, to be completely honest. Some people love them. Some people hate them. The thing about lip flips is, one, they don't last very long because this is a muscle that we're using all the time. And two, since we are using it all the time, we obviously can't put it like completely to sleep because then you wouldn't be able to chew or talk. So... It wears off relatively quickly. Some people who have a gummy smile, and by all means, like a gummy smile is not something that needs to be fixed, quote unquote. But if it if you have a gummy smile and it bothers you and you get a lip flip, those are typically the patients that really like them. But people who are looking for a lip flip because they think it's gonna give them volume in their upper lip, you might as well just get lip filler because you're gonna have to be getting this lip flip like every three months, sometimes even sooner than three months. Um, what else have I learned? Um, I've done a couple lips, well only two lips. I did just like a retouch for someone who has been getting filler for a while and they just had a few areas that needed a little retouch. And then today I actually did a full lip um i use the right angle technique when you just come down this way it helps kind of lift this area up a little bit and then standard volume which is just injecting this way um to add volume so i did that today and that was a really fun um and overall i've just really been loving it um, now that I'm doing this, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else, which feels really, really good because I definitely had my run around finding something that I truly enjoy, um, in the nursing field, but aesthetics is truly something so unique and I feel like a lot of people think it's easy, um, and I would definitely say it's easier than bedside nursing based upon like your mental well-being your emotional well-being and physically um i'm not on my feet for 12 hours things like that but there is a lot that goes into aesthetics and i feel like sometimes people are like oh you're just sticking needles in people's faces all day um there is a lot more to it than that like i said it's a lot of anatomy it's a lot of technique and by all means i'm not comparing it to bedside nursing and saying you know, anything comparing it to anything, pretty much, but it's definitely not as easy as people think, um, but it is a really wonderful field, and I've been loving it, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below, I don't want to make this video super long, I just wanted to make it, like, chatty, like, things I've learned and things I've done um, as a nurse injector and just kind of like document my journey. So yeah, so far I've done a lot of Zeman, a lot of Botox um, and a couple lips. And I I placed some PDO Smooth Threads last week, which was really fun. Um, PDO Smooth Threads, I feel like people see them on like social media and they like freak out because it is a little scary looking. Um, but they are injected into the subdermal layer of the skin and they help produce collagen. So it's just a little thread. Um, it's similar to what is used as a stitch if you ever it stitches and it just dissolves. Um, so the thought behind putting these threads is you're causing an immune response. You're causing damage to that tissue and your body has to heal it therefore producing collagen um that's all i'm gonna say about those for now because i've only done it one time and i am learning all of the things but they are really really cool and a lot easier to place and i think people think like it's 
doesn't hurt as bad as it looks <laughs> um, on social media. Um, and there's also PDO lifting threads, which is like a whole nother thing, um, which can help with like jowling and tons of different, different areas. But yeah, that is what I've learned so far. Like I said, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, leave them down below. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video.